Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube land and to my sister, Adrienne. Today, we're starting a brand new study together called Praising God Through Prayer and Worship. And uh, we've decided that we're just going to be meeting together Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the morning before our day gets started. Excuse me, and we're going to continue uh, just a day by day. So it's going to take us longer than it might take you out there. Uh, and uh, this study is written by Kay Arthur and Pete DeLacy. And uh, I'm so delighted that we are going to do this. It seems to me that uh, this summer, this uh, particular study is being promoted by Precept Ministries, and both in the United States and in Canada. And so I'm glad that we're going to be going along with that. Although it is going to take us longer. <laughs> Because concurrently, also, we are studying the book of Romans, which is pretty in-depth study. So anyway, I'm just going to read from the text so that it's on here on the uh, video for everyone. Beginning at page 11. Introduction to Psalms. Man needs to pour out his heart to God to come before him and honestly present his concerns and feelings, whether distress or joy confusion or confidence. Man in right relationship to God was made to sing, to lift up his voice in worship, to speak to God and to others in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with his heart to the Lord. You can find that in Ephesians 5 verse 19. Sorry for the growling thing going on. <clears throat> That's why some psalms include instructions for accompaniment with stringed instruments or flutes. David, who wrote many of the Psalms, appointed Levites to serve in the house of the Lord. Scripture tells us about this transition that follows Israel's wandering. They ministered with songs before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. That's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 31 and 32. Psalms is a book of prayer and praise written by several men inspired by God. The collection of 150 individual songs is organized into five books. Psalms is not a continuous chronologically arranged story like we find in the historical books. Unlike prophecy, Psalms has no continuing message developed chronologically or thematically. And unlike epistles or letters, Psalms has no continuous unifying teaching or train of th thought throughout the book. The book is an anthology, a collection of 150 different prayers, praises, or songs. Each psalm is a unit of expression composed during a moment of need or desire. Each has a unique purpose, although many can be grouped in categories like the psalm of a sense. A sense, that's ascended. As you study the psalms, remember that they are poems. Hebrew poetry does not contain rhyme and meter like much English poetry. Instead, Hebrew poetry's distinctive feature is parallelism of some form. One line relates to another in various ways. Usually the poetic lines are composed of two, sometimes three segments in which the second segment repeats, contrasts, or completes the first. Psalms vary in design. Some are acrostics, with each verse or stanza beginning with the next letter from the Hebrew alphabet. The majority of the Psalms have a description, oh, sorry, <laughs> have a superscription at the beginning, which designates one or several things, the composer, the occasion, whom it is written for, how it should be accompanied and what kind of Psalm it is. If a Psalm has a superscription, read it and consult cross references noted. This will help you put the psalm into context. Watch for a theme for each psalm and how it is developed. Sometimes it's stated at the beginning of the psalm, other times in the middle. The theme is the author's design for the psalm, which of course is God's intention. Some psalms give insights into the history of Israel, such as Psalm 78. Study these carefully. Note the events, God's intervention, and God's watchful care. 
Don't miss the central focus of the Psalms, God. You can learn many things that will lead you to worship and adore him more. Carefully observe his names, titles, and attributes, and note the believer's supernatural response to him. You'll also see unbelievers' natural responses. Don't forget to look for Jesus, who said, All things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. You find that in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. In a notebook, record your insights about God. As you do this, meditate on what you learn. Spend time in praise and prayer. Let the book of Psalms help you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Finally, because hymns and contemporary praise music often are based on songs, when you read words that remind you of a melody, feel free to sing aloud and along to God. Pour out your heart to him as the psalmist did and listen for his response. Become intimate with God in your prayer and worship. Now, I think today's uh, lesson is going to be a little longer just because I had to read all of that, Adrian. And um, I must say my setup here is out on the front porch, as Adrian well knows, and I'm in my comfy chair. And uh, so if I look over here like this, I'm actually looking at Adrian on the screen of my computer. <laughs> so don't be disturbed by that. I just want to check one setting here once, just a little bit for my preference, make sure I'm using the right. No, I'm using the wrong microphone. So I'm going to switch that and see if this makes any difference. Did that make any difference? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here we are in week one, and the title of the chapter for this week is What Would David Do? And remember, we're not going to go um, through this in a weekly fashion. Oh, sorry, that was my phone. Um, we're not going to go through this in a weekly fashion, but we're going to go day by day by day as it comes. And that will take us longer. All right. What would David do? So the way we usually work this for you people out there and to remind Adrienne is that I read a lot of the text and uh, she reads the scripture parts. And both of us are using uh, New American Standard Study Bibles because that's what we started with with Precept and that's what we're doing. Okay, what would David do? Remember the popular question, what would Jesus do? If you study the Gospels, the answer is clear. He would pray early, late, and often. He would cry out to God, confident that God would hear and answer. Was Jesus' prayer life special because he was the Son of God made flesh? I'm just going to have to pause here for a minute. Sorry, everybody, my daughter's calling. Well, hi, I'm back. <laughs> I can't remember where I was. All right. Um, uh, you're, you got to go to yes. Yes. Did his pattern reflect? Okay, so, all right. Was Jesus' life, was Jesus' prayer life special because he was the Son of God made flesh? Yes. Did his pattern reflect the Old Testament, God's word to mankind in writing? Yes, again. The Psalms show us how David and others prayed in the millennium before Jesus was born. Here we are at day one now. As you read any book of the Bible, you'll see the author emphasize subjects by repeating key phrases and words. Since you'll be marking many of these words and phrases throughout the Psalms, a good technique is to record them and how you plan to mark them on a three by five card and use this as a bookmark. So um, Adrian and I use our study Bibles and in the back of our study Bible is a concordance. And so um, sometimes we lose our bookmarks. So if you have this type of uh, inductive study Bible and it has a concordance in the back, you can also mark your keywords into the concordance at the back. So that way your consistency in marking keywords in the Bible uh, improves because you just look back in your concordance and say how did I mark that there but uh, if you don't have that and you need a bookmark anyway just uh, put it on a three by five card recipe recipe card or something like that all right 
Doing this from psalm to psalm will help you mark consistency and save, consistently and save time. So today we're going to read through Psalm 1 to see what the psalm is about. So Adrian, here we go, because we're going to read it more than once. So we go into the middle of our Bibles, and I'm in the Psalms, <clears throat> Psalm 1. Here you go, kiddo. You ready? Yep. Yeah. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay, so one of the things that we always do when we are <coughs> doing inductive Bible study is we want to mark all references to God, the Lord, and, and we also mark all the pronouns which refer to him. <clears throat> so he, him, all of that. Okay, now. So we, I'm just going to read here. We're going to read it again and mark every reference to the Lord, including pronouns. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know how you mark it, Adrienne. I was just going to put the red triangle about it because around it because this, to me it's the same thing as God. Yes. Okay. So, yes, God, Lord, uh, uh, Jehovah, any of those kind of things, we mark the same way. And the suggestion from the Precept Ministries is that you mark it with a triangle, which indicates Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you're marking Jesus Christ, which we often mark with a cross. Um, and I started out in my study marking God with uh, a red triangle, too. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read again, and every time we get to Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, or God, pardon me. Okay. Now, uh, I wanted to mention to our friends out there in YouTube land that people who are become uh, precept students become addicted to colored pens <laughs> and pencils. <laughs> that we do. <laughs> yes, we do, we do, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I just have to find... Let's see if this one works. Oh my goodness, no, it's too old. Okay. And it's helpful, I mean, if you have a plan and you and you keep to that plan all the way through, that works out better for every for you later. Because then you can see the consistency of the things that you've learned throughout the word. Okay, so let's read it again and we're going to mark. Ready? How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Lord. And in his. His. Law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Very good, very good. Um, some people watching this might question why we are marking in our Bibles in this way. Adrian, do you know why we're marking in our Bibles this way? It helps us remember, for one, um, where the scripture was found is one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. And then I can't think of any more. <laughs> well, when we slow down, we are slowing our, ourselves down to examine the scripture text. 
So often we read stuff like we read a novel and our eyes kind of scan and I'm kind of a speed reader so I kind of skim through things and then you don't take in uh, you don't take in what you're reading so very well. So when we're actually looking for specific things, we're kind of uh, searching for hidden treasure. And um, the hidden treasure we're looking for is truth from God, work, God's Word. Okay, so we just found out about the Lord. We're going to talk about, let, later on, after we finished marking this, we compile what we learn about the keyword. Why is it a keyword? It is something that's a repeated phrase. In the Bible, God, Lord, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, all of those are keywords because that's who the Bible is from and who it is about. Okay, so we marked that. Now we're going to read again and we're going to see bless, blessing. Now I marked mine in a particular way before. And so I'm going to look up in the back. A bless. I marked mine in a particular way. B E. I did too, and I got to find it. Oh, I use pink. And there's the pink. Okay. Have you got your found? Did you find yours? Yeah. Just give me a second. I gotta. Okay. Now, um, I I found when you're using colored pencils artists colored pencils are much better than student colored pencils because the artists color colored pencils are soft and they don't if you are using a bible that's parchment then you're not going to be uh tending to um rip your page which i have done before so i'm using the prisma color because i like those all right so let's read through we're looking for blessed a blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like ch chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Yes, excellent. So, um, uh, as we're reading this, we're noticing something else happening here. I wonder if you notice the contrasts. We see two thing we see a contrast between two things in this psalm. What do you see, Adrian? The righteous and the wicked. Yes. Contrast between the righteous and the wicked. Okay, good. So, uh two kinds of men. Contrasts are usually introduced by the word but, but watch for this indicator as you read. You can mark them with a little lightning bolt or a simple slant. I just always circle but. And it doesn't matter what I circle it with. I just circle it but. Let's read it one more time so, to get our buts. Okay. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Are we marking nor or just but? Mm, just but. Nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but. But. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted. Uh oh, by streams of water. Which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. 
for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay, so we saw, that's good. That's good. We're going to see that. Now, we, we want to mark wicked and righteous. Okay, so I always mark wicked and sin and iniquity and all of that with a black box. Sometimes I even fill it in with gray because that's how Whatever I feel about it. Whatever you wicked, I don't know if I marked wicked in this. And uh, usually, okay, so in our study of Romans, we were marking righteous, and I developed a new thing to way to mark that in my Bible. I, had, I marked righteous already. Right. So I just want to see if I mark wicked. Okay. So we're going to look now. Oh, this is a Crayola crayon. It's not going to be very nice. Not, so I'm going to mark it the same way I mark sin. Okay, good. All right. So let's mark wick. Read from the beginning and mark wicked. And then we're going to put, uh, we're going to mark righteous, however we did. Uh, just for everybody else's uh, information, you don't have to do this. You develop your own marking system, but sometimes you need a, a little hint on how to get started. I always put a big green R through mine, righteous. And, and sometimes if I don't see that well, I also underline it. So that's just how I do it. Okay. Now, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Wicked. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Sinners. Oh, I'm going to mark that the same way I mark wicked. Nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers. All marking the same. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He Hold on a second. Have... We're not going any farther. Okay, so the man who does not walk in the counsel of the sinners, that is righteous. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that guy is righteous. Oops, I just wrecked that pencil. And now I'm going to need another one. So we're what? Ow! Oh, we're marking that contrast anyway. Man, who does not walk in the way. Uh, yep. But his scoffers would be the same thing. Then. Scoffers is the wicked guy. Nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers, yes. Yeah, scoffers is wicked. Okay. And then, but his that's the righteous guy. In his, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He, oh, this pencil does not work very well, will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. Keep reading. Now, just give me a second. Which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. He, he is the righteous guy. And whatever he does, he prospers. Okay. The wicked are not so. Wicked. Oh, yeah. But they. They. Mm -hmm. Are like trap, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked. Will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners. In the seat of in the assembly of the righteous, mm -hmm. for the Lord, Lord knows the way of the righteous, mm -hmm. but the way of the wicked will perish. Excellent. Okay. So, what is the righteous man like? Now that we've marked this, now we can we can glean what we've learned. This is a short psalm, and we're going to be finished soon. What are his characteristics of a What are the characteristics of a righteous man according to this psalm? If we're going to make a list, I'm going to make a list. That's why I have my notebook handy. Yay! Good for you. Okay, hold on. What is a righteous man like? The righteous man, first off, how? Let me go back. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So, first of all, he is? It's 
a word we marked. Righteous. He is blessed. Yes. Okay, and what does he not do? Walk in the path of righteous. He does he doesn't walk in the path of in the counsel of the wicked. <laughs> not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Yes. He does not stand. So this is all poetic language. He does not stand where? Path of sinners. And where does he not sit? Seat of scoffers. Excellent. Good. So there are three different uh, aspects. Walking, standing, and sitting. In general, he's not hanging out with wicked people. And then the con contrast with what he's not doing is what he is doing. So what is he doing? His delight is in the law of the Lord. Excellent. So for you people out there in YouTube land, when we're, when we're gleaning and compiling our lists, we, take, we don't change what scripture says. We just write it down, what it says. And as we write things down, I don't know about you, but as a student when I was in school, the best way for me to remember things was to write out notes for myself. Helps me to remember the, the things that are important. Okay, so... But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And what else? Meditates on the law day and night. Yes, meditates in the law day and night. So what is the result for his life in his life? Hold on. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. Yeah, that's a good place. So if you're driving around the countryside and you see the trees that are growing near the, the streams and brooks and lakes and rivers, they're well watered. <clears throat> and what happens with that uh, tree? Yields fruit. In its season, yes. And what else about that tree? It sleep does not wither. Right. And what else? I'm writing. Give me a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and whatever he does, he prospers. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Good. Let's uh, look at the wicked man now. What are the wicked like? Like chaff. <sighs> the wind blows it away. <clears throat> Will they pass the muster at just at judgment? Excuse me. No, they, the wicked will not stand in judgment. Okay. Uh, sinners won't be in the assembly of the righteous. Exactly. And the way of the wicked will perish. Yep. Who sees and knows all this? God. Indeed. So um, when, when we're talking about wickedness, we are talking about actions or righteous. We're talking about actions that we do. <clears throat> 
So God looks out and he watches over and he sees what's happening. Very good. All right, if we were going to name this psalm, how would we name it? That's another thing I wanted to point out. In our study Bibles, there is a lot of room on the sidebar margin for us to take notes. And there is also, um, we can make our own titles. Rather than just accepting someone else's title. Yes. Which was never written by the author. It was just added as an editorial afterwards. We can decide what we find the main thing. So um, generally when we make titles or themes, we try to encapsulate in as few words as possible um, what we've learned about the key words. So that, and the purpose of that is so that when we look at that, we know what that's, we can instantly in our minds say that's what that psalm is about. So what would we say this psalm is about? Um, blessed is the man who is righteous. Okay, so I don't know. So it's got to be contrast between I am. I'm just gonna be a righteous, uh, um, righteous. I'm. I'm just. And the wicked will perish. That's what I'm putting down. Righteous are blessed. Wicked perish, comma, wicked perish. When I was first learning how to do this inductive study, we were really encouraged to use five words or less. Sometimes that's hard because they're in some chapters of the Bible, there are so many topics in one chapter that, you know, it depends on what day you're reading it, what, what particular topic of that chapter the Lord brings forward. But I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five words. Righteous are blessed, wicked perish. That's five words. Okay. Now we're going to look at uh, Psalm chapter 2. Okay. So uh, we are going to be looking at marking nations and its synonyms and the Lord. So nations, uh, if you've done studies in the Bible before, you will um, find that you mark Gentiles or the nations, um, and you do that in a similar way. Um, yeah, how I marked Gentiles then. Yeah. I'm cheating. I already marked this psalm in my Bible. <laughs> okay, I know what I did. So we look, I, just for the record, I'm going to read this in. Uh, we're looking at nations. We're looking for the Lord. We're looking for sun and all the synonyms. We're looking for for Zion. Zion, no. Okay, so uh, nations, Zion, sun, and God. Okay, those are the four things that we're looking. And, uh, okay. Let me just see. Mark, okay, it says here, Mark, Lord, as you did in Psalm 1. Before you choose a way to mark sun, identify him. If you're unsure, read Acts chapter 13, verses 32 to 33 for a little help. So let's do, let's just skip over there into the New Testament. Acts, Acts what? Mark, Luke, John, Acts. It says here, Acts 13, verses 32 and uh, 33. I'm there. Okay. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled his promise, this promise to our children, in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm, you are my son today, I have begotten you. Ah, so in, in Acts, who is speaking here? God. No, 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 just wait a no, minute. Um, Paul and his companions. Who I is it? Capergus reading of the law i'm just seeing oh it was paul so paul here is uh standing up and speaking to men of israel and you who fear god 
So it, then he then there's this whole speech that he gave. <clears throat> it starts in um, verse 17 and it goes through to verse 41. And so Paul was a Jew. He was an apostle. And he was speaking to both Jews and Gentiles. And he's he says again, we're preaching preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers that would be uh, Abraham Isaac and Jacob that God has fulfilled this promise to our children in that keep reading for me yeah. verse 33 yeah, just give me a second there. in that he raised up Jesus as it is also written in the second psalm you are my son today I have begotten you so, in other words, Paul is affirming that the son written about in Psalm 2 is Jesus. Yes. So this is how uh, we let scripture interpret scripture. So, back we go to Psalm 2. Okay. So, we're marking nations, the Lord, and the son. Are you ready? Just give me a second. Got your tools handy? Yeah. And Zion. Zion is... Uh, I'm just going to double underline Zion. Okay. Why are the nations in an uproar? And the peoples devising a vain thing. I would, I would mark peoples in the same way as as nations, nations. yeah okay. i'm often wrong but that's what i would do the kings of the earth yeah i would do that too kings kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers Take counsel together against the Lord. Oh my, lots of pens here. And against his anointed saying, let us tear their fetters. Who's the us? Huh? <coughs> who is the yeah, us? I'm going back to that in a minute. I realized that. I have my red pen handy. And cast away their cords from us. I love this next statement. He who sits in the heaven laughs. I just love that. The Lord scoffs <coughs> at them. Them. <laughs> Yeah, we keep several pencils and pens in our hands. Then he will speak to them in his oh my, anger and terrify them in his fury saying but as for me i have installed my king my zion upon zion my, oh my <laughs> running out of fingers <laughs> holy mountain i uh wait oh no that's not right I, I i always leave those if i'm not quite sure okay i will surely tell of the decree of the lord he said to me he? oh i know how to mark it he no he said to me just a minute <clears throat> Me, you are my son. Yep, you are my son. Okay, so 
The me is the sun. And the I, the I would mark the I the same way. Yes. So sometimes we have to wait a minute and read the whole thing in its context, because context rules to understand who the pronoun is standing for. Good job. Okay. So, okay, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, my son, and son and me are together. Today, yeah. Today, I have begotten you. That's God the Father, have begotten you. Ask of me. That is the Father. And I. Yep. Will surely give the nations. There they are again. As your. That's the son. Inheritance. Yes, because sons get the inheritance, right? And the very ends of the earth. As. As your. Sons. You. Oh my. Possession, I mean. You shall Son. break them. Them is the. Nations. Mm hmm. With a rod of iron, you. Son. Shall shatter them. Nations. Like earthenware. Now, therefore, O kings. I would write that as nations. Um, I was thinking of that too. Show discernment. Take warning, O judges. Same way? Yeah, I would do that. O judges of the earth, I would mark that. Yep. Worship the Lord. Uh -huh. um, triangle or cross? Triangle. With reverence and rejoice with trembling. Do homage to the sun. Oh my, I'm reading to myself. That he. The sun. Not become angry and you, you. You nations. Perish in the way. For his. I would say the sun. That's what I was thinking. Wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed. Oh, there's my blessed. Are all who take refuge in him. Excellent. Good job. So what. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm? Him cross or. Uh, yes. I would, I, yeah, I would say that's the sun. So okay. what attitude toward God do the nations, the peoples, the kings and rulers have? Is it respectful? No. Okay, so from the beginning, what's happening in verse, in the nations are, how are they? In verse 1. The nations are in an uproar. Yes. And what else are they doing? Devising a vain thing. What else are they doing? Give me a second. Oh, sorry. So this is your uh, list on the nations. Sorry, so my eyes are wandering about. It's because I'm looking at this little bird who has flown the nest, and but he's still staying in the branches for his mother to feed him. <laughs> yeah, he was out of his nest all night, I guess, sitting on a branch instead of in a cozy nest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're watching the bird. Yeah, the bird. Okay. The um, ugly bird. So yeah, he is. Fair, well, he's getting he's getting nicer looking now. That he's got more feathers. Okay, so the nations are in an uproar. What else are they doing? So um, the kings of the earth uh, take their stand, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Yes, and against his anointed. So who do you think his anointed is? I would say Jesus. I would say that's the son as well. Mm. 
So they're, they're, they're plotting. Take counsel together means kind of plotting. They're plotting against the Lord and against Jesus saying... Um, let us tear their fetters, let fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. Exactly. Okay, so what's God's attitude about that? He laughs and scoffs at him. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because they can't do anything to him. <laughs> Yeah, his plans and purposes prevail, don't they? Yes. All right. Keep talking. I've got to get my purse ready. Okay. Hang on. All right. So now we're going on. We're going to look up Micah chapter four. Oh my goodness, I forget where Jonah Micah. Where is Micah? Isaiah. I forget where Micah is. Oh my goodness. We're looking up Micah, but I don't know where it is. Is it before him? Micah? Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm. Where's Jonah, Micah? Micah. Psalm. Jonah, there it is. But we're looking. Okay, where is it? After Psalm? Just Psalms. give me a second. What Micah are we looking at? It's four? I'll Micah tell you chapter what four. Oh, I can't find it. <laughs> I'll tell you what page to go to. Okay, okay. One, four, nine, three. One four, okay, so I'm, it's past Daniel, Ezekiel, one four. Oh, I have to go quite. Amos, ah, oh, there we go. Okay, okay. Uh, my, that's terrible. Eh? <laughs> it's such a small little book. Um, Micah, chapter four, verses one to three. And it will come about in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and the peoples will scream. Ah, the peoples, there they are. Yep. Uh, many nations will come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us about his ways and that we may walk in his paths for from Zion. Mm -hmm will go forth the law, even the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he will judge between many peoples and render decisions for mighty distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation and never again will they train for war. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Okay. Though all Mom the peoples walk in, in the name of his God, as for us, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So you notice in uh, Psalm 2 and in this Micah passage, and you will notice it elsewhere, that Zion is often called the holy mountain of God, the city of the Lord, whatever it happens to be in that particular place. And the question here is, if the nations believe this Psalm's truth about the king, what would their attitude be and how would they act? What does God tell them? He would sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid. Isn't that amazing? Some classify this as a coronation psalm written to celebrate the anointing and installation of David or one of his descendants as king. How does Psalm 2 help you see that its powerful truth has a future fulfillment? Well, it would say, it says in uh, Micah, in cha Micah chapter 4, it says, and it will come about in the last days. So that's yes. a future tense, right? And if we're yes. going back to Psalm verse seven, ver, uh, chapter 2. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. 
Okay, so it seems to me that um, in verse 5 of chapter 2 and onward, there is a, a something that's yet to come. And I will surely tell, and you shall break them with a rod, and you shall shatter them. So that, to me, indicates a future tense of things to come. Yes. So how does the promise of this um, help us to pray and worship more intimately? What do we know from this psalm? That it speaks of the sun, of the sun to come. Mm -hmm. And has he come? Yes, he has, but then he will hadn't. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be uh, judgment and wrath coming. That has not come yet. So we see that the sun has come, but the wrath and the judgment has not come yet. No. So, so that gives us a future hope that, the, the, that whatever is happening now is not the end of the story. So that means that the, there's more yet to come. So I'm going to pray a little bit of this psalm, and then we will call it a day. And uh, I'll sign off for you people in YouTube land, so let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this study in the psalms that we can uh, learn to hear your voice and to understand your word. Thank you that yet a day is coming uh, when you will hold all of these wicked nations, this wickedness, the wicked people, you will hold them to account. And we're so thankful that you sent Jesus Christ to buy us back out of the slavery of sin and that you um, have made us part of your kingdom through him. And we are, we are asking you, Lord, to help our leaders have discernment and to take warning and to worship you with reverence and rejoice with trembling and to do homage to Jesus Christ, your son, so that they may not perish. Father, we know that when the wicked are exalted, then the, the people groan. And, and when the righteous flourish, the people are happy and contented and you see where our world is right now, Lord, and we're groaning and crying out to you, but yet we're trusting you that you have written the end of the story and we're not there yet. We see that in Micah that there's a time, a day coming when the people will beat their, their, uh, their swords into plowshares and there will be no more of this fussing and fighting on earth. We're longing for that day. You didn't mean for us to live in sin. You meant for us to live in Eden. And we know the difference between good and evil now. And, and we acknowledge that uh, we live in evil times. It's seemingly more so than before. So, Father God, help, these, help us to learn through studying these psalms um, how to praise and worship you in a pure, deeper way. And uh, bring these thoughts to mind throughout our day today in be and in the time in between when we're going to meet together to study your word again. And I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you friends out there in YouTube land, I'm going to pause this recording now and say see you next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Oh,